Mass immunisation campaigns can be a real logistical challenge, yet it is absolutely vital they be carried out, including in unstable regions where there are areas that are too dangerous to work in, where there's a shortage of health workers and where roads are often impassable. Without vaccination campaigns, there could well be a major measles epidemic affecting thousands of very young children. At the end of March, MSF teams in Bria in East Central African Republic started vaccinating children aged between 6 months and 15 years. Our campaign here in Bria is targeting 15,000 children. At the same time as we immunize against measles, we screen for malnutrition. Children who are found to be sick are referred to the hospital. The conflict that has spread through this ravaged country has left the health system in ruins. And the east of the country, a stronghold of former Seleka rebels, is just as badly affected. The all too few humanitarian and medical aid agencies here are unable to cope with the many health issues such as measles epidemics. We're seeing this epidemic because political instability caused the population to be displaced. So people don't have access to health care and can't take their children to get vaccinated. They're scared to leave their homes to go to health centers. It takes just one case to go unnoticed for measles to spread like wildfire. In August 2013, MSF was working in Bria, responding to the seasonal malaria peak. The program was scheduled to last just a few months. But meanwhile, the country was descending into a spiral of violence and the few remaining medical facilities were no longer functioning. Two years on, the situation remains critical and the teams don't expect to leave Bria any time soon. This is an unprecedented worldwide phenomenon. Rarely have there been as many serious and protracted conflicts and crises forcing countless people to flee, whether it be from Central African Republic, South Sudan, Democratic Republic of Congo, Syria, Libya or Iraq. In the countries where we work, we've never witnessed so many refugees or displaced people, people forced to flee. And we're seeing that the amount of work to be done is enormous. The vast majority are either displaced within their own countries or are seeking refuge in a neighbouring country. Although far from a destination of choice, European countries often view these migrants as a threat. Right now, Europe is much more committed to deterring and containing migration than assisting these people who have been forced into exile. The measures that are taken don't change people's decision to escape from a country where they are in danger. All they do is drive them to take even greater risks, with the result that the Mediterranean Sea has become the most deadly migratory route in the world. The paediatric unit at Ruchuru Hospital is only just beginning to empty. The height of the malaria peak saw around 50 children being admitted every day, and due to the lack of space, there were sometimes three to four patients to one bed. Rapid diagnosis is the key to successfully combating this parasitic disease and to prevent it from becoming fatal. Some people always first consult traditional practitioners or go to prayer rooms, so they come late to the health center. As soon as they arrive, we refer them to the hospital, but some are already dead. Oliver is nine years old. The doctors diagnosed an anemic form of malaria, which is the one MSF teams see most of. Parasites have attacked his red blood cells, preventing his blood from transporting oxygen to his organs. 
He was stabilized after receiving intravenous treatment and a transfusion. Measles, pneumonia, diarrhea. There are vaccines to combat child killer diseases, and they're the most effective way of preventing millions of deaths annually. Yet one in every five children does not have access to all the vaccinations they need. Among the many barriers is the cost of vaccines, which is increasing relentlessly. The main culprit behind this inflation is pneumococcal vaccine. PCV protects children against one of the most severe forms of pneumonia, and pneumonia is the most common cause of child mortality worldwide. But the pricing policies of the laboratories producing the vaccine are veiled in a cloak of secrecy. To better understand, let's go back to the beginning of the process. PCV starts its life here, in one of the two laboratories that manufacture it. Their quasi-monopoly enables them to charge high prices without disclosing their real manufacturing costs, with the result that buyers are forced to negotiate blindly. There are two purchasing strategies for PCV. Firstly, countries purchase it as part of their routine childhood vaccination programs. Low-income countries have temporary access to the vaccine at a reduced, partially subsidised cost of $21 per child. Some of these countries could lose this support in the coming years and may no longer be able to afford the vaccine. Other middle-income countries, considered too rich to need help, have never been able to afford to provide the PCV vaccine to their children. Secondly, PCV is used by humanitarian organisations in emergency situations. But they too are charged prohibitive prices for the vaccine. For example, in 2013, MSF wanted to immunise children in South Sudan's Yida refugee camp. But despite lengthy negotiations, the organisation was unable to acquire the vaccine at an affordable price and had to restrict vaccination to under two-year-olds rather than providing protection to all children up to the age of five. MSF has been campaigning for five years for PCV to be made available at an affordable price and is now calling for more transparency about the manufacturing costs and the pricing policy in different places around the world. But most of all, MSF is demanding that PCV be made available at a maximum cost of $5 per child. En fait, je suis arrivé au Yémen au mois de septembre, début septembre, dans un pays qui était euh, instable, euh, avec des besoins médicaux, mais dans une ville qui, elle, était sécurisée, donc où, dans laquelle on pouvait, euh, on pouvait se promener. Donc il y a eu une progression des outils tout le long, mais il y avait un laisser-faire aussi derrière. Il n'y avait rien vraiment tendu, en tous les cas pour Ramer. Et du jour au lendemain... Ben, tout a basculé et du jour au lendemain, ça devient un pays euh, non sécurisé. Donc on te demande de sortir parce qu'il n'y a pas d'autres possibilités. Donc tu es évacué en urgence, vraiment. Même si tu sais que c'est possible, évidemment, tu n'as pas envie que ça arrive. Et tu as l'impression de pas de vivre un cauchemar, mais d'être dans, dans un truc complètement surréaliste. Et là, tu, tu, tu quittes et tu pars sans, sans avoir le temps de, 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 de dire au revoir, si ce n'est au téléphone ou juste d'appeler une personne. Et, euh, et tu, tu, tu laisses derrière toi des tu laisses derrière toi des amis finalement parce que ça devient des amis c'est plus fort qu'un qu simple lien hiérarchique ou de travail et eux tu les laisses dans, dans, dans un merdier et toi tu te cases donc c'est bien beau tu as ta petite souffrance et puis euh, tu as tes petites larmes mais toi tu es en sécurité eux ne le sont pas et tu peux rien faire quoi et ça c'est c'est ah, c'est pas normal quoi c'est pas enfin, c'est pas normal ça l'est parce que 
c'est pas une fois que tu auras les pieds devant que tu vas les aider, mais ça, ça fait chier. Quoi.